uh, this is part two. My my little video froze up on me, so I had to just keep going. <clears throat> but anyhow, she tells the story of um, of she didn't even want to be on the same coast with him. She's like, I need space. You know, sometimes sometimes when your heart's when your spirit's been bruised and your heart's been broken, you need space. <clears throat> so she moves back to the East Coast. To North Carolina. And she tells this, the book about even the stars look lonesome. Uh, she tells the story how she bought a house and how that house and her repairing it and fixing it up, how the house began to restore her. And she also tells the story about her grandson had been missing. For four years, nobody had heard about him. <clears throat> she hired builders, and she's like, I want to build my grandson a room, his room. All his room, brand new, I'm going to build it. So she contracted it and uh, built her son, her grandson, his own place, a room in North Carolina on her house. <clears throat> she said just as they finished the room, said that her grandson showed up. And she uses the analogy of that she she drew him home. She she built him a room. She had the universe to draw her son back. You know. So anyhow, <clears throat> the the other thing I've heard over the years uh, uh, about the Bible uh, when when I spent my years of twenty years every day reading the Bible. Um, I read it purposely from Genesis to Revelation three times without breaking. You know, I'd go out and I'd read I'd, I'd read to a couple of chapters of Genesis. Next day, I'd read a couple more. Well, I did that over a period of years, three different times. I started, I said, now I'm going to read the Bible again, and I'd read it from Genesis to Revelation. <clears throat> I'm not saying that's the best way to read it, but I wanted to say when... <laughs> When somebody says, have you ever read the Bible? I'm like, well, sure I have. I've read it three times, <laughs> you know. So um, you hear people make this analogy about the Bible. Oh, every time I read it, I find something new that I didn't. It's like God opens my eyes and shows me things. Well, folks, I got news for you as a reader. I can read this book. Every time I read it, I'm like, oh, but I didn't catch that the last time I read this book. You could read Gone with the Wind 10 times. On the 10th time, you'd be like, whoa, I, now I get that. I see that different now that I've read. That's just part of reading. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> oops, <clears throat> talk too much. My throat's dry. Um, I'm not saying the Bible's not a powerful book. It is. It's been used to abuse itself into religion, into people's lives by other people. Um, I had this, I had, I'm just going to close with this right here. This is the last few minutes of this. I think I had my journey, my insight. When I came, when I wrestled, you know, like in the Old Testament way, wrestled that angel. I think I went through the years that I lived by myself, I wrestled with the inconsistencies, the teachings that seem so not God. Um, I think I wrestled until I came to the place <clears throat> where that once I accepted that Christianity is a religion, it's not the religion, it's not the only true religion, I come to the place where I realize Christianity is a religion. Not unlike being a Muslim, being a Buddhist, being a Hindu. They're religions. Uh, I don't like religions. Religions, there's, some, there's something about them. Now, <clears throat> I love many people that's Christian, um, I'm going down Saturday to celebrate 
My Uncle Aaron and Aunt Shirley's uh, life here on earth, they were both Christians. They loved the Lord. They would proudly tell you they was Christians. I loved them. <laughs> um, I've known Muslims that I've loved, uh, Buddhists. But Christianity is religion. And once you look at it through that paradigm, you get to see it in a different light. Um, somebody asked me recently, you know, just in talking to well, Eddie, let me ask you this, you know. <laughs> said, do you believe Jesus is still the only way to, to the Father? I'm like, no, I, d I, I don't believe that. Because in my travels during that time in my 40s, I spent some time in Costa Rica several times. <clears throat> Chile, down in there. And then it was odd that I'd, be, I'd start to see God in other peoples, other cultures. I'm like, and my religion, when I was Christian, <clears throat> <clears throat> interfered with my spirit being able to freely just see them as God's creation. It was trying to pull me over and make me look at these beautiful people as, oh, they're lost. They're not even right with God because they don't have the religion that I have. I don't want none of it. <laughs> I don't want none of it. Um, anyway, I don't know where I was going with this other than to say I read the book of Ecclesiastes it seemed like a rambling old man who had dementia sitting in him. It's really not that readable. You know, when you when you read other things, when you read when you read uh, when you read like uh, Doctor Myangelo, and the words just seem to kind of roll off the end of your tongue, and then you read a sentence where all of a sudden you realize a tear is coming down your cheek. You know, like oh, I've been hurt like that too. I've been hurt like that too. The power of word. People try to hang up and say power of the word. Well, let me tell you this and close it, as they would say at the end of a revival. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time, is as powerful as any word you'll ever hear. Love y'all. Namaste. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Good night.